Dear students, today let us understand what is a topographic map, how was the origin and growth of these maps, what are the functions and uses of topographical maps, its components and the methods of its interpretation. A topographic map is a detailed and accurate two dimensional representation of natural and man made features on the earth surface. Topographic maps are based on topographical surveys performed at large scales. These surveys are called topographical in the old sense of topography showing a variety of elevations and landforms. These are also called as the general reference maps because of the details presented with exact accuracy with reference to appropriate coordinates. These maps are usually made by the public agencies using photogrammetric methods and are issued in series of individual sheets. Great attention is paid to their accuracy in terms of positional relationships among the features mapped. In many cases, they have the validity of legal documents and are the basis for boundary determination, tax assessments, transfers of ownership and other such functions that require great precision. The Canadian Centre for Topographic Information defines topo sheets as a topographic map is a detailed and accurate graphic representation of cultural and natural features on the ground. Other authors identify topographic maps as one of the classes of maps distinguished from Chorographic maps that cover large regions, planimetric maps that do not show elevations, thematic maps that focus on specific topics and topographic maps that is large scale reference maps. Topographic maps in their paper form have been in use for many years, but in recent times topographic maps are increasingly stored, transmitted and used in digital format. For example, Garmin offers dozens of topo maps that may be purchased on DVD or via direct downloaded. Its application is actually spread in much broader field especially with the development of navigation technology. Origin of topographic maps. In the late 17th century, French finance minister Jean Baptiste Colbert hired Jean Dominique Cassini who was a surveyor, astronomer and physician for the topographic mapping of France. He ordered for maps that indicated man-made and natural features as determined by precise engineering surveys and measurements. They would portray the shapes and elevations of mountains, valleys and plains, the network of streams and rivers, the location of cities, roads, political boundaries and other works of man. After a century of work by Cassini, France was the proud owner of a complete set of topographic maps, the first country to have produced a complete coverage of large scale maps. Since the 18th century, Topographic maps have become an integral part of all the countries of the world in defense departments because of the valuable nature of these maps. Most of the countries started making topographical maps of their respective regions. The US Geological Survey USGS, is responsible for topographic mapping for United States of America. The Ordnance Survey for the Great Britain and the Survey of India for India. The Survey of India was started up in 1767 to help consolidate the territories of British East India Company. It is one of the oldest engineering departments of the government of India. It is India's central engineering agency in charge of mapping and surveying. 
The survey of India's distinguished history includes the handling of the mammoth great trigonometric survey under William Lambert and George Everest and the discovery of Mount Everest. Its members are from Survey of India Service, CADR and Civil Services of India. Topographic maps are used for a number of applications. If you want to make planning for simple camping, hunting, fishing and hiking or to plan for more serious applications such as urban planning, resource management, energy exploration, public works design and emergency response etc. In fact, military planning was one of the earliest uses of topographic maps and topographic maps continue to be used for military planning even today. There are at least four scales in which topographical maps are published. One is to 25,000, one is to 50,000, one is to 250,000 and one is to 1 million. The most distinctive characteristic features of a topographic map is that the three dimensional shape of the earth surface is modeled by the use of contour lines. Contours are imaginary lines that connect locations of similar elevations. Contours make it possible to represent the height of mountains and steepness of slopes on a two dimensional map surface. Topographic maps also use a variety of symbols to describe both natural and human made features such as roads, buildings, lakes, streams, vegetation, etc. Topographic maps also use standardized cartographic conventions to represent additional features such as using colors like blue for water, green for forest, etc. Several different coordinate systems are shown on topographic maps. In addition to latitude and longitude, the base coordinates for the map, these maps show UTM grids, townships and range of other things. The basic instructions used for interpreting the topo sheets. First of all, when you observe a topo sheet, you have to verify the title of the topo map. You will find this information in the upper right corner of the map. The title of the map will identify the name of the place or the most prominent community or natural features contained within the map. You will find out the scale of the map. The scale is found on the bottom of the map. In the center, you will see the scale as well as graphical representation of the distance. You can use this information to interpret distances or size. For example, a map drawn at a 1 is to 50,000 means that 1 centimeter of map space is equivalent to 50,000 centimeters or 2 centimeters equal to 1 kilometer on the surface of the earth. You will notice the latitude and longitude readings found on the outer border of the map. The vertical numbers represent the latitudes or the distance north and south. The horizontal numbers are measures of longitudes and run east to west. The intersection of a line of latitude and longitude is the coordinates for that particular area. You will find the magnetic declination symbol located in the bottom left corner. Because of the differences in dimension between the land and the uh, paper map, you will need to apply a correction to your compass settings in order to accurately navigate using the map. The symbol shows what that correction factor is in degrees. Look at the colored areas of the map. The colors will give you an idea of the land cover depicted on the map. Green areas indicate areas of vegetation such as forests and wetlands. Blue denotes water. Urban areas may be represented by red or a tint of red. Take note of the placement of curved lines within the map. These lines are contours that represent the elevation and topography of a place. 
along the line you will find the approximate elevation in feet. Lines close together indicate sites of steep elevation whereas areas with spaced out contour denote regions where the landscape is flat or of a rolling terrain. Determine specific features on the map by consulting the symbol. There are symbols that are grouped into general categories such as mines and caves or rivers, lakes and canals. You will notice that the map includes several symbols for man-made features such as roads, airports, etc. Conventional signs and symbols used in topo sheets. Because there is not enough room to print the words of the items which are represented by the symbols for simplicity and due to space constraints, it makes the map easier to understand. In addition, if full names of features were to be used on maps, it would be too messy to read. Since a map is a reduced representation of the real world, Map symbols are used to represent real objects. Without symbols, we would not have maps. There are conventions used in cartography which allow a map to be read efficiently and quickly. A good map will have a legend or key which will show the user what different symbols mean. For instance, a square with a flag on top usually represents a school and roads are represented by a variety of widths and combinations of lines. Every map is a representation of a larger portion of the earth. Without a north arrow, it is difficult to determine the orientation of a map. With a north arrow pointing to the north gives the correct direction. A user can determine the direction. A neat line is the border of a map. It helps to define the edge of the map area and obviously keeps things looking neat. Since the map is a flat representation of the curved surface of the earth, all maps are inherently inaccurate. There are a variety of projections which have to be formulated for different uses. Colors appear so often on maps that we often take it for granted that mountains are brown and rivers are blue. Just as there are many types of color maps, there are also many different color schemes used by cartographers. The map user should look to the legend for an explanation of colors on a map. Elevation is often represented as a sequence of dark greens to browns to white or gray. Additionally, as water always appears bright blue on a map, the user is often inclined to visualize any water on a map as pristine and clear blue, even though it might be entirely different color due to pollution. These signs form part of the language of topographic maps. They are provided in the key reference below the map and are used the world over. You should get to know and understand them thoroughly. Map symbols for cultural phenomena, phenomena created by people. The signs used on maps are selected to be immediately recognizable for what they represent. Cultural phenomena that are shown are buildings, towns, power lines, dams, canals, trees, plantations, fields, etc. These symbols are exaggerated on the map because they would be too small to be represented if their actual sizes were represented. Map symbols for natural phenomena, hills and mountains. The most important natural phenomena are mountains, hills, valleys and plains. These phenomena however, have to be deduced from contour lines and are not represented by specific symbols. Rivers and water bodies, another important natural phenomenon shown on topographic maps is the drainage of a particular area. This is observed by examining the rivers and their tributaries which are indicated in blue on a topographic maps. Regularity of the rivers. On the topographic maps, perennial rivers are indicated by means of continuous blue lines while the seasonal rivers are dotted lines. Direction of the rivers. 
the direction of the flow of a river also provides information about the higher and lower parts of an area. Water always flows from high to lower places. Tributaries flow into the main stream in the direction of the flow. Tips for interpretation of topo sheets. Understanding contour lines. When first looking at a topographic map, it may appear somewhat confusing and not very useful. There are a few rules that topographic contours must obey. However, and once you understand these rules, the map becomes an extremely useful and easy to use tool. The rules are as follows. Every point on a contour line represents the exact same elevation. As a result of this, every contour line must eventually close on itself to form an irregular circle. In other words, the line created by the intersection of the glass with the mountain it cannot simply disappear on the backside of the mountain. Contour lines on the edge of a map do not appear to close on themselves because they run into the edge of the map. But if you got the adjacent map, you would find that eventually the contour will close on itself. Contour lines can never cross one another. Each line represents a separate elevation and you can't have two different elevations at the same point. The only exception in this rule is if you have an overhanging cliff or cave where if you drilled a hole straight down from the upper surface, you would intersect the earth surface at two elevations at the same x y coordinate. In this relatively rare case, the contour line representing the lower elevation is dashed. The only time two contour lines may merge is if there is a vertical cliff. Moving from one contour line to another always indicates a change in elevation. To determine if it is a positive or negative, you must look at the index contours on either sides. On a hill with a consistent slope, there are always four intermediate contours for every index contour. If there are more than four index contours, it means that there has been a change of slope and one or more contour lines has been duplicated. This is most common when going over the top of a hill or across a valley. The closer contour lines are to one another, the steeper the slope is in the real world. If the contour lines are evenly spaced, it is a constant slope. If they are not evenly spaced, the slope changes. A series of closed contours represent a hill. If the closed contours are hatchered, it indicates a closed depression. Contour lines crossing a stream valley will form a V-shape pointing to the uphill. The other features which are represented on the topo sheets are the settlements. The human features are represented on the topo sheets through the settlements and infrastructure. The settlements range in size and character depending upon the landforms, occupation and other infrastructural characteristics. There is a close relationship between the type of settlements with the location and geographical condition of the region. The pattern of settlements is usually linear if they are along road feature. Radial pattern if it is a hilly region. If the region is a dry land, the settlements are usually dispersed. In fertile river valleys, you may notice that the settlements are highly clustered. The other features observed in the topo sheets indicate the form of the economy through the location of markets, daily markets, location of important industries, location of mines, location of farms, etc. It indicates the dominant religion by representing symbols like mosques, temples, church, gurdwara, etc. 
and other social conditions represented by symbols of schools, colleges, hospitals, post offices, banks, police stations, etc. We can also interpret the topo sheets using the natural features. The topo sheets represent the location, distribution and types of vegetation, the various types of forests, etc. While observing these features, we can correlate the impact of the vegetation on the man surrounding and how man is adjusting with the nature. The important type of vegetation which is indicated on the topo sheet not only gives information of the major classes of vegetation such as open scrub, thorny bushes, grassland, thick evergreen vegetation etc., but also social forestry and details of the various species of important plants such as teak, sal, bamboo, fir, mangrove, coconut and other palms. This can be interpreted relating to the type of rainfall, temperature and humidity condition existing in the region. Various types of water bodies such as tube wells, open wells, tanks, ponds, lakes, rivers, coasts, etc are also presented on the topo sheet. The distribution and density of these features indicate the kind of occupation and livelihood of the people. Example, in riverine regions, the density of houses of fishermen indicate the occupation of the people. The settlement pattern indicates whether agriculture is a chief occupation. Similarly, with water bodies, other ancillary information like ports, ferry, key etc. facilitate to understand the kind of transportation system which is available to the people of this region. We may conclude that topographical maps are therefore a great source of information. They not only depict the forms and features, but help in interpreting logically and intellectually the things which may not be present upon them. They are one of the great sources of information and they will continue to exist even in future. Thank you.